decriminalisation, adoption rights, equal marriage, Britain's LGBT community has undoubtedly come a long way over the past 50 years. But despite this, LGBT people still suffer with higher levels of depression, anxiety, addictions and suicide. I know because I'm one of them. Soho used to be a place that I would come to to get out of my head. Today in recovery, I'm more likely to be here sipping a cup of herbal tea. Why is it that so many LGBT people suffer with mental health problems? In my experience, these problems are never far away. Rob Goddard was a man I worked with briefly at Attitude magazine. In 2013, at the age of just 34, he took his own life. He was called him on. He was massively gregarious. He was the central part of every social situation. He had thousands of friends. With those real highs came the very big lows as well. You know, he, he parted quite heavily. He did recreational drugs. He found a certain utopia within that environment, you know, where he could just be himself and nobody would really care. But I remember you saying to me you didn't think he was very happy being gay. He was fiercely proud of being gay. You know, he, wasn't, he never hid it mm. at all. Um, but not from anyone, did he? But I think that, that had a negative effect on him as well. You know, I remember a time where he was sat at the back of a bus. It was quite early hours of the morning with his with his uh, boyfriend at the time. Just his head on his shoulder. They'd just got back from a club or something like that. They're on the on the bus on the way home. Just laid his head against uh, his boyfriend's shoulder, and he was beaten up for it. He even asked the the driver of the bus to to step in. You know, and the driver of the bus was very negative towards him, and kind of. It essentially said that if you put yourself into this position by being outwardly gay, then you deserve what you get. Just months before he died, Rob had a psychotic episode after ingesting window cleaner and other substances. He ended up breaking up his own there. leg. And Rob was literally smashing his leg against the wall. There was blood absolutely everywhere. He was in hospital for a while and I did go and see him. And he was so sorry at what had happened. And he said it was the drugs. He said he, he, he thought he was like fighting an army in, in the bedroom. Powerful drugs like crystal meth and GBL are increasingly popular in the gay male community. Antidote, the UK's only LGBT-specific drugs and alcohol service, has seen a dramatic rise in the number of people seeking help. Some people would say, you know, they're using drugs, you know, it's not the end of the world, but, but for some people it really, really destroys their lives, doesn't it? Well, we see people that have lost their jobs, lost relationships, lost their homes. Um, you know, it has a devastating effect on people's mental health. I think it's important that we start looking at some of those underlying issues that, you know, um, people are using drugs on. You know, the low self-esteem, the um, feeling of not being good enough, just the loneliness and isolation as well that some people can feel. Young people still struggle. Staggeringly, Stonewall recently found that nearly half of young trans people have attempted suicide. Amy Challoner, a 19-year-old from Coventry, was bullied to the point where she considered taking her own life. It started off with low-level verbal comments and then the physical bullying started to happen. I was being pushed around. I was having things thrown at me because of my gender identity. Things, and things thrown at you? Things thrown objects. at me. Uh, books, pens, rulers. Because this behaviour and this bullying was affecting me and it wasn't being called out, wasn't being tackled by the teacher, it legitimised it. Both it gave them sort of power to do the actions, you know, oh well, we're not going to get in trouble for it. And it legitimised it in my head, you know, if, if this is happening and it's not being called out, it's not being tackled, you know, maybe I am not worth as much, maybe I am a lower person. There was that thought that if, if I could just end it, that I wouldn't have to put up with the abuse anymore, I wouldn't have to put up with the bullying anymore and it would just stop. And 
if that was the only thing that I could do to get it to stop. It was the only thing left that I felt like I could control. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to A Change of Scene. Talking is something we haven't done enough of. A Change of Scene is a monthly discussion group for gay and bi men to share their life experiences, often for the first time. You need to be out, you need to be proud, you need to be happy, look how fabulous we are. We go out, we just have fun. Yeah, definitely, there's an image, kind of like general image <laughs> within the gay, gay, gay community that we, we feel that we have to project. You may ridicule gay men, you know, uh, but you can't ridicule my lifestyle. I feel that I need to show something that I'm okay to be me. But of course, for me to actually make so much effort to do that, deep, deep down, of course, is an insecurity. I don't feel like we've moved beyond the position of defending our right to exist yet. My experience as a gay man is very much about proving my right to be who I am still before having the, the luxury to, to reflect on how I can kind of be a healthy, joyous version of that. This isn't just a gay issue. When society fails to support LGBT children, whole families can be devastated. It's time we all woke up to this mental health crisis.